welcome to the Choosing Happiness podcast with me, your host, Rudrani Davy, the happiness lady. Well, howdy, y'all. Rudrani Davy, uh, the happiness lady with you again. Yes, I even wrote a book about it. Shameless plug for me. Speaks eight languages. Yeah, so, you know, I find it interesting that you're all on this podcast because I've been noticing a lot of cranky pants going on in the world. But this next lady, oh my God, is she all my next guest. She happiness personified. I've been watching her creating her life. I mean, I've like been stalking her on YouTube and, and on uh, Facebook and all the places that she goes. And her life is so fucking amazing. I mean, and she has so much fun being her that I had to have her on the podcast. Emily Russell, thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast, Choosing Happiness. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing so good. And thank you for having me. And can I just say, I like in your intro, like your Southern accent really kicks up. I really appreciate it. I, oh. I love it. <laughs> it's a little bit of a put on because, um, because I just love the Southern accent. Totally. You know, I love wrecking to and fixing to and y'all and howdy and all the stuff. So it's. Bless your heart. <laughs> that's, that's your little heart now. <laughs> that's right. Emily Russell, what are you up to, girl? Oh, well, like you said, I've been up to making joy and happiness a priority over everything else, like pleasure over any of like being stressed out, doing anything from a to-do list because I have to, because of pressure, because I should. Um, And that's always been a priority in my world, but I really in the last year have made it like a conscious effort to when I'm looking at doing something or choosing something or working on a project or with a person, like, does this actually add energy to my life? Does it bring me joy? Am I going to feel more fulfilled afterwards? Like when I indulge having done it, do I feel happier? Like, is there more joy in my world? Do I have more energy? And if it doesn't, no matter how much logical sense it makes, I've really Mm -hmm. made it a priority of like, not to say yes to those things that are have to, shoulds, pressure filled. Ah, yes. I've been learning the art of no thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was saying yes to everything. Mm-hmm. And I was getting so tired. And I wasn't feeling like I was nurturing myself or, you know, being kind to me. You know, I, I always, when, when people need volunteers or they want support for whatever it is that they're doing, I always am the first one to raise my hand. And I finally got to that point where, hey, is this actually contributing? Not just to them, but to me. Yeah. You know, I had to include myself as, you know, got to remember I'm the valuable product here. <laughs> I've got my back, you know. But it's so, so easy what to else? forget. I mean, I that's what led me to that. I, you know, I was talking with a friend a few months ago and she's like a high performance coach. So she talks a lot about burnout. And we were just chatting about her business and um, sort of strategizing about things. And as she started talking about burnout, she's like, well, the first phase is, you know, you just kind of feel frustrated or maybe you're like reacting more than you normally do or like one email can set you off or one comment someone makes. And she's like, most of us think of of burnout as like the, I can't go to my job anymore and I'm like unfunctional. But as she's Mm -hmm. describing these phases, I was like, hmm, that's where I am right now. And I had never even looked at it because I think partly like you and I are similar and we're really enthusiastic. And like you say, like, you need help with that? Can I like be on that thing? Like, so I want to say yes. And somewhere in that, I had not put myself and my joy and my happiness as a priority. And I started to feel like super tired and, and burnt Mm -hmm. out, but I didn't even know that's what it was. I just was like, I'm not being me here. I'm like more reactive or kind of like, you know, about certain things. And it was such an eye opener. Um, because like you're saying, we do it from this place of, I really want to create a lot and be involved with a lot of people and all that. But when it starts to be, but where am I in the equation or where am I sitting at my own table? <laughs> it's like, it's like you're putting the, you're putting their creations first yeah, and you're not even asking the question, Hey, is this something that I want to co-create or be a part of? Yeah. You know? And I think that's so, wow, why, so you know, the thing like you're, this is choosing happiness. You're the happiness lady. And I think we all have to look at, <laughs> what is it that we really value and prioritize? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, of course, other people's like conversations and people and projects and businesses will be a part of that. But you need to look first of, is this actually like part of my big ask in the world and my vision? 
And if it is, I think it is something that will give you energy and you won't get stressed out about, you know? But I think myself, at least I can speak for myself, I don't wasn't asking that all the time. I was more like, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> is this is this actually real and true for me? Is this gonna actually bring me joy? Yeah. You know, is is this gonna expand me? Because you know, it's like, what did we come here for? Did we come to compare ourselves with other people? Did we come to to be um another version of something that's already out there, you know? Or did we, you know, for me it's like, okay, what did I come here for? Hmm. To expand. You know, to expand out. I mean, it's a, it's a weird thing to say, but it's like when I get to that space, that spaciness, and I include everything, especially myself, because <laughs> sometimes it's like, where did I go in that equation? Um, that's when I seem to be the most happy and it becomes very clear to me what's going to work and what isn't going to work. You know, I mean, I wake up and I'm so freaking psychic that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sit up. I'm like, OK, am I going to go meditate first? No, right. Oh. Do I want coffee? Do I want... My body literally leads me to where I'm going to go. And it's, and it's amazing. That's my early mornings. And then by the time other people creep in, some of that goes away. And I have to go like, okay, walls and bears are down. Expand out. What is, what's true for you? What's true and real for you that you've not yet discovered? You know, where, where are you going to go next? You know, maybe today isn't a, maybe today is all about being in nature or whatever it is. And it's funny that you said the burnout thing, because you're right. I have a tendency. <laughs> I do, where I suddenly go, oh, that just pissed me off. They, they aren't being kind to me. They're pretending to be kind or something like that. And, and I go, and then I get into the mental masturbation of it all. Yeah. Like, okay, so why did I choose this? You know, they invited me to the cool table, but they didn't really want me there. You know, it's kind of like keep your enemies closer. They kind of want to find out what I'm doing. Or whatever. It's just, yeah. what was your aha moment? Or did you have one? Or were you just, one day you just couldn't get out of bed? It's never been, I couldn't get out of bed. But it was more literally that conversation with a friend. And I just hadn't, I knew I had this sense of frustration. Is I think everyone has a different thing that comes up. For some people, it might be depression or no energy. For me, it's frustration. When I have that, that's my key from the universe of, hey, Maybe we're moving in a direction that isn't what you truly desire or value to like to create here. So that'll come up. And I think I was making myself wrong for a while of being frustrated. And I'm like, but this isn't me. I'm not a rant rant sort of person. So when that started to come up, I was like, okay, something's going on here that I need to shift. What can I look at? You know? And like you said, it's so interesting. One of the misconceptions I think people can hear when they hear, well, choose for you and put yourself as part of the equation and you're the most valuable product. It's like, it's not about being a narcissist. It's not like all of a sudden we go, okay, like, you know, I'm a single mom. I have two girls. It's not like I go, and I'm just not making you dinner anymore, or I'm just not going to be a part of the family. It's like, no, that's not what we're talking about. It's like, right, right. they're really, I chose to be a mom because I love it, you know, and I noticed I was so busy that it would like stress me out to have to help with homework, you know, or oh, well, yeah. dinner. And I was like, wait, but that is my children. And actually the joy of being a mom is something I really value. And I did come here to have this lifetime, you know? So, okay, how can I rearrange things? And that's where I started to really look at everything on my calendar and really like put my finger down what I have on my calendar and go, okay, when I've done this, Am I going to have more energy, more life force, mm. more satisfaction? Or, and if I could take it off the calendar, if that was not a yes, I did. And then I started noticing, okay, the things I'm doing, and then I'm really frustrated afterwards or like rah, rah, after I do it, okay, that's a clue <laughs> that maybe that's wow. something I can look at of maybe that's just not where I'm going right now. We change so much. Um, well, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. I, I love the way you put that. You know, for me, you use, you use frustration. For me, it's impatience. Yep. I start to get really impatient. I try to control everything. You know, I get super righteous about it. I'm like, I'm the one making all the money here. Why are you taking so much? <laughs> you know, you've met Celeste. She's lovely. I love lovely that. Mother. Yep. She's, she's very manipulative and all the things also. She knows how to, to get me to jump, you know, and, and she likes to poke me with... I wish I wasn't such a burden. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, now she's feeling like 
and you know, but we, we're both playing the game. We know what we're doing. Yeah, and <laughs> mothers and daughters, come on, we know how to trigger each other. <laughs> sure. But that's where I put it too. Do. Like you mentioned a couple of times, when I've started to get triggered by other people or I want to point a finger at, well, why are they doing that? Or they're not being kind or they're not. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's where I'm like, uh -huh. what in me have I not resolved, cleared, looked at that allows me to be triggered? Because that has, they're going to do what they're going to do. Like you said, you can't control that, but there's got to be a place in me that I haven't cleared that that's triggering me. So then instead of outward, like this needs to change so I can be happy. It's like mm -hmm. everything is a clue to right. what inside can you look at? Because that joy, that bliss, that happiness is really our natural state. And it comes from the inside. Right. Right. Yeah. See, this is this is where I go to. OK, what is the gift in this? Yeah. What what am I actually because when you can actually recognize that you're being triggered, what is the gift that leads you to finding your way or finding your way out of it or, or what, however you want to call it? It's like every decision I've made, whether it makes sense or not, even to me, <laughs> got me where, where I am today. And I'm, I'm at a place now, Emily, where it's like, it's really none of my damn business what people think about me. I really don't care anymore. Yep. And I used to make it so vital. I used to make it so important, you know, that I'd be respected and liked and all this stuff, you know. I mean, it's really funny. I had somebody um, call me recently that uh, I teach some classes for her in Paducah. And she had um, a person um, get upset with her because of the cost of her classes or something. Um, and, you know, she does her own thing. She's a Reiki master and has a beautiful uh, facility in Paducah. And so she was talking to the woman, and the woman really wanted her to come. Oh, I know what it was. They were teaching these certain classes, and this woman was reducing the prices, and they had all decided that they were going to stick with this one price that's consistent. Now remember. And so, why is this story relevant, Rue? Okay. So what happened was, is she reached out to her and said, listen, you know, we all agree we're going to do these prices. And this woman said, yeah, but I'm nobody's choosing my classes because they're you know, because it's too high. She goes, but you make it harder for the rest of us. She's trying to explain it. And she goes, oh, that's easy for you to say. You're driving a Mercedes and you live in a mansion and, you know, you have beautiful jewelry and da-da-da-da-da. And I, So she called me for some facilitation. And I said, goodness gracious, isn't the universe doing you a favor? Do you really want this woman in your life? Yeah. Let her choose her. Let her choose what she's choosing. Don't have a point of view about it. She goes, yeah, and you know what? I'm going to go out and buy me a pair of shoes because I can. She <laughs> want to get me a pair of high heels. I was like, that's so me. You know, you know that I love to shop. I love clothes. I love jewelry. Check this piece out. This is the last thing I got. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. This has been in my, this was actually in my mom's family. It's 22 karat gold. It was a custom made piece. Mm. She and my father both have a coat of arms. They came from royal families down the line. And this is a piece that she inherited. I never saw her wear it. She's always afraid to wear jewelry. And I'm like, forget about it. I'm all I'll about wear it. that. Yeah. You know, right. It's like, who cares? You know, we can always put it in the safe later if you're nervous when we leave town or whatever, all stuff. So, but you know, there are people that are going to judge us for choosing what we choose. And I've had people say to me, well, I wouldn't, you know, I'd spend my money on blank. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's you. I like a nice piece of jewelry, you know? And, and that, I mean, do you ever get like, pointed to like, you know, easy for you to say, easy for you to choose. Right. And, I don't and I they think, don't know they can choose, I think is the, is the caveat. Yeah. And, and I think again, just like we point fingers to have compassion for those people <laughs> that are pointing fingers at us, they're dealing with their own yeah. stuff too, you know? And mm -hmm. like you mentioned, I think one of the gifts, I don't know if it just hit me at midlife, you know, <laughs> But it's like we've earned this, and I don't know, we don't have to earn it, but it's like I felt like we've been through high school. I've done the, you know, the middle school crap. We as women have spent so much of our life, like, like you said, caring what people think. And finally, it's like this, this redo you get over, like in this second wave of like, you know what? I finally get that none of that actually matters. And I'm here right. to actually um, create what I would like to do. So long, Emily. Why does it take so long? But you know what's cool is 
it shows up and you're like, wow, we didn't get it before for a reason. I don't know. You know, I'm like, but I'm just grateful to have that now because it's like, I feel like I have a permission slip to go, just like you said to that woman, maybe you don't need to be working at that place and with this person. It's okay to actually curate your own table in the world and your life to what works for you. And not everybody, at a certain point, that person is pointing a finger and judging at you for wearing jewelry or whatever you charge for your classes. It's like, okay, I'm not in high school. We don't have to be in the same clique and friends. So, so it's okay. Like, it's okay to not have you at my, like at the table because we're all here right. on different, like doing different things. And I think I know for myself before it was like, okay, let's all go in the same direction. Or if you're not going, like, if you don't get me, then maybe I'm worried. Or if I don't know, like you seem to have it figured out and I don't get it. It's like, do your own lane. And I don't know why it took me a while to really integrate that. Like a lot of us say that, but you know, when we were talking even before we started recording, you're like, wow, I finally just like, it's like you have this past to really not care what people think. Like the best freedom in the world. I don't know why it takes so long to actually know that's a really great thing to have and actually embody it. It's a whole level mm-hmm. of freedom that <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's true. It's like this year at Christmas was the easiest for me with my family. Every year I always try to get out of town. Like right. the year before I was at a castle, you know, I literally left the morning that's after right. Christmas to get away from everybody, you know, and I did the New Year's Eve party and I did a three day body class just because they're so delicious. I, mean, I don't even know how many of them I've done now. It's so crazy. But this Christmas, it was like, I have no control over what they do or think or say, you know, they're going to destroy my house. They're going to make a mess. But so I just point blank, you know, said things like, you know, you guys, this is not a hotel. I'm not here to just wait on you every time there's a holiday. Okay. So it'd be really nice if you could take your dish, scrape all the scrappings out into the garbage and put it in the dishwasher. And I'm not even going to have a power trip that you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you do. There you go. That's good. Just do whatever you got to do. And it was amazing, Emily, because everybody wanted to help me. And I broke my wrist the day after Christmas hanging. It was a it was a decorating accident, a Christmas decoration accident. A broken wrist. Was, um, oh my god. I did, I never. It's fine now, it's but um, I was healed. hanging a wreath. Huh? Fast. Healed. It healed really. Good. Yeah. In fact, even the doctors were like, what did you do? I mean, because I didn't go for two weeks. I didn't know it was broken. But the, but most of the bruising was gone. You know, I, I did my magic and I put some snake venom on it. With, you know, this the venue stuff that I <laughs> represent. And, or, and they were like, it's like you're, you know, four weeks out, not two. But, I, you know, so I wore the little brace. And, you know, I could have done a lot more than I did. But I made it all about me being, you know, broken wing. Can you all help me out with everything? Yeah. So they were like making the beds and helping us out with the cooking and all the stuff. And, you know, it was kind of like I was in a, in a hotel, <laughs> in my own house. So good. I'm actually sitting in your, in your bedroom right now where you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that, like, nice oh, so was... Like, it let you be able to let go of control and actually receive where people were available to contribute and just, yeah. like, change the dynamic I... so it worked for you. It really did. And, you know, something I'm actually super grateful for all of them. I really am. I mean, I used to be so cranky pants because they were always like, why don't you go to church? And da, 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 da. they're very Catholic or Mormon. My family, I'm one of six, you know, so I've got a sister who's Mormon and has six kids that are all trying to have six kids. And then I've got my family and I'm a great, great aunt. And it's, it's kind of crazy because I'm more like the children than I am like the adults, as you know. Yeah. But you know, it was actually, it was so, I actually had fun. I mean, because I got out of the way and I, you know, I didn't make everything so important or it has to be my way and all the things. And you want to know something else, too. They used to make fun of me because I like to eat off the fine china. They were actually setting the plates and every day with the fine china. Nobody even questioned it. They were doing it because, I mean, I, you know, I heard words before. <laughs> her house, her rules, and I didn't even say it. It was, like, what? really cool. I was super grateful for that. And so... We could go on and on about this topic. I want to talk a little bit more about what you've been getting into. But before we do, I got to pay the bills, Emily. Okay, got it. I need to take a moment for our sponsor, Mandu, the electrocution workout. That's right. They hate it when I say it. But uh, I have a little one-minute commercial, if y'all don't mind taking a little little look-see. And I'm actually the star of the show. So there you have it, y'all. We'll be right back. 
And we're back with the lovely and talented Emily Russell. We was talking about, you know, being selfish and putting ourselves first. No, that's not what we were talking about. <laughs> Talking about being a valuable product. And, you know, actually being that valuable product, isn't that something you would want to show your kids? Hey, you know, put yourselves, you know, first so that you're not cranky pants and you can actually be around the rest of us or whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know if you're phrasing, but. Because your energy is your most valuable resource. At least I, that's what I think. You know, that is something it's the best compliment or acknowledgement in the world, I think, is like, I really just like your energy. Because we all have such a unique energy and our energy is the most valuable resource we have. And that's why I really look at everything from that standpoint. And I think earlier in life, as we were talking before, when we're more about people pleasing, there's so much external validation available. Um, school, your job, you know, and if if you're a high performer achiever like myself, um, I'm like, yeah, I want to no. check that box and deliver. That feels really good. But it's all from that external validation versus I think in this different phase, you start to go more inside and it's more right. it's for me about energy. How, like, what do I feel like? Is it satisfaction, more energy, more alive, more awareness? Like those are the things I value versus the check mark of, hey, you did a really good job. You know, yeah, um, I love that manipulation. It's such a great job. You should do it all the time. Yeah, you're I mean, really I use good it at this. You want to take on 10 more projects of that? Well, not really, but I do <laughs> like That's the thing. It's such a, it's such an easy trap to get into. Yeah, it is. You took the words right out of my head. Yeah. It is a, it is a trap. You know, it it's like, I see what you're doing there. I like that manipulation. I, you know, I learned it from you. Yeah, so. but it's like not, not right now. And like you said, it's something I really, I think is really important to be that. So my daughters see that and they're willing to also not make it about the extra, you know, they're both ones in middle school, one's about to be in middle school. And oh my goddess. one's- They're growing like weeds. Oh my gosh, I know. And one is school and that like the, grades very easy for her the other one's school is, is not that way but super creative so i've just really for both of them it's like it's not about the extra the test score or the grade or if the teacher mm -hmm. says this about you like what is it for you like what what lights you up what makes you excited right. and they're very different and i'm very different and i love having that variety but to show them that it's okay to choose you and your energy first and not have to like check a box for someone else or feel like you're only getting validation from the outside. You know, because that right, never right, works. Right. There's no big giant like present at the end that is like, yay, mm -hmm. you're amazing and worthy because you checked all the boxes. Like it's not there. Sure, you get a gold star. Yeah. <laughs> it's not there or, in your you know. work. It's not there in a relationship. Like I remember, I mean, I very much was like, I'll get married, then we'll get a house and I'll have kids and not that. <laughs> Any of those were wrong choices, but a lot of them, right. I didn't even think outside of that box. Truly. Sure, sure. It's what's expected of you. Yeah. You know, I remember at the age of 18, telling my mother I was never getting married or having kids. I went to school when I was 16. And you knew that um, at 18. I knew it at yeah. 18, but I said it because I, I had been conditioned to believe that the man is the king of the, the ruler hmm. of the house. And he has the right to make all the decisions. Once you marry them, they own you. And my father was very strict, very strict, you know, and he always said family first, but I wasn't even allowed to open my mouth at the table. It was like, you know, children should be seen and not heard all the stuff we hear about. And I, and I ran away from home a lot. Poor Celeste. I'm sorry, lady. Um, so we had to make a deal and deliver. So I skipped a grade and graduated a year earlier well, because I had to get out of the house. Yeah. So here I'm at 16 in college going, oh. I have so much freedom now, but I didn't know, even know who I was. I had to start figuring it out. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I knew it was weird that everybody told me so, so that must be true. That much. And, yeah. and the thing was, is I began to be okay with it. I got lucky. I did finally get married one year, one year, one month before my 40th birthday, I finally got married. Um, and it, it didn't last long. It didn't because he actually, did say to me, well, now that you're, you're married to me, you know, I own you. And wow. you have to hey, do at least he was honest about it. You could, you could make a bad choice from that. 
It was, you know, and he wouldn't let me divorce him or anything. It was a strange, until I was injured. And that's another story. It was in a wheelchair. He, um, and, and then he started, you know, he started a family with somebody else, all the stuff. Cause you know, yeah. but he'd been, he'd been messing around the whole marriage. And yet he didn't want me to leave it. It was just the funniest thing. Because these women came to me after the fact and were like, you know what he said? You know, you were broken and all this stuff. I'm like, okay. I mean, they, the doctors had told them I would never walk again. And they never told me that. And I didn't think, you know, it was like, I knew I was going to walk again. Yeah. I mean, I don't have twitch muscles in that right leg, but I, it, it still works. Hell, I you ran the never... Boston Marathon. Exactly. It's amazing. So, and I have this really interesting trick leg that likes to... <laughs> Hey. Stuff. When I get around energy, my arm and my leg, it's really hyperkinetic movement disorder, but it's fun, man. A y'all. great party, a great party trick. Come on. <laughs> it's never another little weird thing to add to my checklist. Yeah. So, yeah. So what have you been up to? Cause it's like I said, I've been stalking you. You're going all over the place. It looks like you've started your, another business. Um, I mean, I know you're going to be home for a while, but that's not going to, that does not mean that she's not working. Oh, goodness. I got to tell you, I mean, if, she just go like energize a bunny. <laughs> if anyone is out there and you have even like your own business or an, of any sort, whether it's on the site, you know that you could be always working. Um, <laughs> so it is Personally. key to give yourself some days just to be or some hours just to be. No, in this last year, you know, you mentioned the question earlier when we were chatting, but about. 18 months ago, I I started asking every day, what is true for me? I have not yet discovered what is true for me. I've not yet discovered. And I just allowed stuff to come in, you know, and I've, I've always been very much love new things. And I am like a sponge. I can soak things in. And if something works and is effective, I love to play with it. Like, give me the biggest toolbox you have for making life more fun, enjoyable for change. Um, and so as I started asking that question, it's like new people just started showing up in my life, new courses, like in the last year, I mean, everything from taking a podcasting course to a different, like kind of marketing business, uh, course, I was everything. I was just like soaking in so many things and it's been amazing. You're curious. Yeah. You're curious. I've always loved that about you. Yeah. Cause even when you would be in classes and ask questions, I'd be like, gosh, that is a great question. <laughs> you know? Where is she pulling that from? You know, well, that's what you, know, both you and I have been playing with the access conscious tools for over a decade. Right. Yeah. And one of the gifts 20. of consciousness is yeah, here. Woo. That's awesome. It's that's like crazy. consciousness includes everything and everyone and judges nothing and no one. And I think one of the gift of having those tools for so long has been when things come in my world from that question, you know, and me just going forward, I'm able to see everything from, well, what of that is true for me? I don't have to buy anything like a hundred percent, you know, what can I hear from that person? Like, because everybody is a unique energy, a unique vessel, even if the message looks the same from different people, we're going to receive different things, you know, and you don't have to go, Oh, I'm all in on this and nothing else. Or I'm all in on this and nothing else. It's like, there's so much out there. So I've had a lot of fun from that space of, I'm a natural kind of extrapolator. Like give me A plus B and C. And I'm like, and there's Z and 10 and 100 and and F, you know? (laughs) So that's been really fun. I actually followed that logic, y'all. I don't know if you didn't, you know, scroll back. (laughs) Cause that was just brilliant. You know, it makes sense to me, but that's what I love to do. You know, so this last year has been a lot of like a mix of adding a lot of, you know, one of my asks was to have a lot of new female friends, especially in my world. You know, I I got out of a long-term relationship and it was a rig adjustment, you know, of my life. And I was like, and to have that support system, but just like someone that goes, I know you've got this, like you're a badass bitch, you've got this. And I'm here to, to... I'm just here, you know, and to inspire each other and to encourage, like root each other on and actually have someone that's excited when you're successful and doing new things. And so my world expanded a lot, like, like just a lot of new people and then travel. And I made time to really like focus on growing my business, which I've always had, but I've also worked a lot, like for the company of access, um, and other people's Mm -hmm. businesses. And I was like, cool. I want to have all of that 
and shift it around a bit and also make sure I have time for like just being a mom and time to hang out with this old friend and time to have a conversation with, you know, someone that's walking by and I just find interesting. And so it's been right. this like real expansion and a richness that has just lit me up. So it's really exciting. That's so cool. Yeah, I was, um, <clears throat> like I said before, stalking you. And um, <laughs> I noticed you were in Mexico. Oh. And I think you were actually taking a class at night or something, but you were doing this yoga retreat, which I used to do those all the time. And it made me think, what have I left behind that I actually really loved playing with? And I had a client come to me that had been coming to me since way before uh, what had happened in India, yeah. 15 years now ago, by the way. So strange, Tom flies. And um, I was a film producer and I would hire her a lot uh, to, to help with production. She was a production assistant. Yeah. Extraordinary. I mean, I'm, I'm playing it down. She did a lot more than just be an assistant. You know, she'd make a lot of the calls and, and help with the budgets and all the things. But, you know, they also respected me as a healer or, or you know, shaman, whatever you want to call it. I was always that weird one that, hey, we're supposed to have rain. Can you do something about it? So, yeah, let me, let me talk to Mother Nature. And I can pull the rain off until, you know, talents and abilities, all the things. But she had come in to see me, I guess it was um, a month ago. And she's like, aren't you going to use the divining rods on me? So I have these divining rods. You know what they are, right? No. Let me show you. I'll show I'm like, you need to show me because I don't know. They're really cool. And what I do is I use them to show people their, their energy fields, oh, cool. you know, and so they may oh, be yes, like, I've seen those. Okay. If you guys are on YouTube, then you're not going to, you're not going to see this, but they're made out of, um, I had a guy that was, um, on, you know, that does the wires above ground make these for me because I wanted them to be really easy to do it. So I'm, I'm holding them still. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. When I grabbed them, I hadn't picked them up, Emily, in years. Okay. But I knew where they were. So when I grabbed them, they just started going crazy. Like, you know, they're like, just, dude, just because they were so excited that I had picked them up, you know, because I hadn't used them in so long. And she goes, what's going on? I said, I've been neglecting my, my divining rods. And, um, you know, so, yeah. So, you know, when I said, so can I have you back? Thank you. So, you know, it's like, if I, I can do your energy field from here and, you know, it's like, that's look really? how wide this is. We know how far away you are from me. You're in Chattanooga and I'm in Nashville. Yeah. But, you know, when I showed her, I w it went over this way. And I said, so let's use some tuning forks. Because all of a sudden I heard the tuning forks going, Rue, you can get her back in her body. Remember, you used to do it all the time with us. So I go and I grab my tuning forks and, you know, and ask where they want to go and all this. And so now she gets on the table and we start doing body processes and a little bit of the bars and the stuff. And wow. you all have heard me talk about that before. But I had, I was so grateful for her to come see me. It makes me want to cry because it was like, I gave all this stuff up for what? Why did I give me up along the way? The things that made me uniquely me. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know what a weirdo I am. And you know what? What if that's my gift to the world and to myself? Being willing to be that weird. You know, and I don't even know where I came up with that with divining rods. It was like, I was that person that wanted everybody to understand, even if they couldn't see it or feel it, yeah. of what we were doing. Yeah. Because not everybody, you know, is sensate. Not everybody can actually sense or feel. And I have all the clarity. I'm one of those people. Like, like, I can't see or very often feel energy. I'm a, I'm a knower. That's the, is it the clairsentient one? So it's, that's, for me, I always was around people that could see it and feel it and like and I was like I just must not get this energy thing I was like oh no. right I get it really dynamically. At this. I just perceive it different but it's like that like what are the gifts of us that you know you just said it so brilliantly that we put down and it's not wrong that we put them down at different times but it's like yeah. as we move forward I think there's this like what are those things that maybe you gave up or stopped that if you just kind of ask what is true for you that you have not yet discovered right. or what ha what are you pretending not to know that right. you know deeper than even your inner breath. That's another one I love. Like, um, cause yeah, I've done you know, uh, yoga for, uh, for years. Uh, you know, I used to teach yoga. Yes. Same. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's like, I have no desire to teach it right now. Although it's fun for me to like do it with friends and you know, all we have so much available um, for our personal change and transformation right. and consciousness and also we're all here to also give things to other people. And that's, 
you know, it's unique. Like you, you asked what I've been doing the last year too. And I, you know, for the, in meeting new people, I went to this like business um, event out in California and we had one day where we were making blankets for a local um, women's shelter. And I was with these other women all over the world that I hadn't met. And we spent about like 30, I don't know, maybe an hour going around like saying, hey, everyone's an entrepreneur, right? So like, this is what's going on with my business and this is where I'm stuck and kind of getting ideas from people. And we're going I around, it was so fun. We're going around, right? And I was amazed that like, I could instantly, like we were chatting, I'm like, oh, what about this or this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have not thought of that. I've been in a business cons for three days, like, thank you. And we kept all having these ahas and contributing to each other. And I realized, whoa, I'm really good at this. Like, I know I've been like, this is partly what I've done for my job for the last 10 years for Access Consciousness, but it's like sometimes the universe has to hit you on the head to go, hey, maybe this is something that like you could also offer other people or the world in a different way than you've been doing. And I was like, right. So that was, how could I make this uniquely me? I guess, I, I think I hear you saying, and it was like, and another piece of it for me was what I wasn't willing to see that wasn't working. Yeah. You know, I just took somebody else's words as real and true without saying, Hey, is this actually real and true for me? Yeah. So that willingness to go, Hey, maybe it worked for a while. Hey, it got me to where I am now, but is it time for me to do something else? And I love this whole, I mean, I've never, we have like women's groups here in Nashville and all the stuff, but I love that you guys all came in you know, all entrepreneurs. So like, badass bitches yeah getting together you know and taking the time because here's this is what i love about it i I really wish women would support each other more instead of this cat fight thing that i'm that i thought was we were all past and yet i i I keep seeing it but i wasn't willing to say because i was like oh surely yeah surely we've gotten beyond that but there's so there are so many amazing women out there not doing that and that's why i loved this like you're saying everybody had completely different businesses too. And we're all at different stages, but it didn't matter when you're like there going, Hey, what's up for you? Where are you stuck? And asking questions and able to go, Hey, what about this? Like, what about this? It was so cool to just be able to do that with a group of people I'd never met. And now we're all still in touch. Right. Because it's like, Oh yeah, that's really great. You got your own WhatsApp thread now. I don't know. Yeah. But it's, it's beautiful to, to, to see that. And I want to, I want to create more of that yeah, in my world. Me too. I mean, as you're talking, I got like a heart swell. Yeah. You know? It's like, yep. cool, cool. I mean, it's, I'm so, this is going to sound weird. Well, maybe not. I'm so grateful for the, for the pandemic. And it, 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 in, in a way it made, because this is what happened for me. I was performing a lot yeah. and that can be tiring also, you know, but I was also trying to build a business within Access. I really love the class Right Voice for You. Oh, you're and as a singer, facilitator. yeah. Thank you. As a singer songwriter, I get a lot of um, performers in my classes. Right. And not always, because the class has actually become more of being willing to step up and step into who you be 100% truly, you know, even if it's just, I don't have a voice in my family or I, you know, I want to be able to get out in the world and meet people, but I'm too shy or whatever it is. Yeah. You don't have to be a singer songwriter or an entertainer or a public speaker to, to do that class. And so I was watching it morph over time and it made me want to be more, um, how can I put it? Like you were talking about rooting for the, for the underdog or whatever it is. It's like my thrill in life is to find people that are ready to step up, no apology, have fun doing it. And if you're willing to go there, let's go. Mm -hmm. I got your back. And I, you know, and now we're out of the pandemic and I went, oh, I can actually do this. I don't, it doesn't have to be in a box. I can do it in other ways. You know, I was doing it before access. I'm not, I love access. I love all the tools and stuff. But I realized that I was limiting myself, that there's also the me brand that might teach something like that in a, not even in a simple, a very different way yeah. that would get the same results or more results. I'm not going to abandon the other, but there are some people that receive differently. You know, it's like you, you're saying, 
we've got several people that facilitate that class. No one person facilitates it the same. No one person. And what, what I love about classes also is the class creates itself by the people that choose it. Yeah. It morphs into, I never get bored, for example, teaching a bars class. I don't either. I, I never get bored. Same book. I'm reading the same stuff. We're doing the same Ugh. thing. But the people are so different. Yeah. You know? New people. It's like the last bars class I had. I had an MD. And I had somebody else in there that was um, questioning their gender. And they were like amazed that a doctor would be taking a bars class. It gave them new faith and whatever. And it was, they became like fast friends. Wow. It was, anyway. Wow. Going on and on to the break of dawn. But I think anyway. that's it. Like what you said, you don't have to throw anything out or judge something as, well, now this has to be wrong because I'm making this right. It's like, we're so multifaceted and multi excited by lots of things, or at least I am. And I think a lot of us are that, you know, and it's adding and it's also saying no to things <laughs> that don't add to your world and your energy, you know, but it's never about like, I think the world is so focused on polarization right now. Like it's black and white. It's yes or no. It's right or wrong. Right. Like you're with us or you're against us. And I'm like, mm -hmm. have to, it's not like that. There's so, and there are people that do that, but to be a different energy with all of that. And it's like, it's not, yeah. that's not what the universe that's the, is about. That's the thing I'm, that was the punchline yeah. for, I'm grateful for this whole pandemic thing because I've come full circle. Everything I believe to be real and true for me, and I'm not making, making me wrong actually isn't real and true for me. <laughs> it's like, wow, I came back to myself <laughs> and it's not so bad. I like me, you know? I love that. So, I love that. It's okay. It's okay, you know? And mm. it's, it's changed the way I am with my family. I am with my mother. I mean, it's like this morning, she has really not been feeling good. And I'm like, okay, lady, are you tired? Do you want to check out? You know, you know, you, you don't have to have a body to communicate with me. We talk to your mom all the time. Right. What do you want to do? I want to be around for a little while longer. And then she made a joke because my brother's been building a house in Chattanooga for like six, seven years now. They keep drawing up plans and then they changed architects. And it's, it's got an HOA. So, that, you know, you can't do this and you can't move the tree here and you, you, all this really weird stuff. Okay. Can't have a paved driveway. That would chat my ass. Yeah. It has to be rocks. But anyway. That's what they're choosing. And we were supposed to have all the holidays in this house because we knew eventually my mom was going to move in with me, but my house wasn't going to be big enough to accommodate. Now we've added the sunroom. We've got all these cots. And so it's Grand Central Station. <laughs> but he announces at Christmas that they finally got approval for the plans. And then when they went to get started, it was going to cost two and a half times more than when they were originally quoted. So they've got to start over meaning they're getting rid of the third layer of the house. It's only going to be two stories now. There's not going to be an apartment above the garage workshop. And so my mom jokingly says to him, am I going to live long enough to actually see this? <laughs> Brilliant, mom. Yeah, I love that manipulation because I'm, I'm not that I can't handle it. Now I know I can, but I was getting tired of having to host everybody for every freaking holiday. Yeah. You know, but, but Easter then look, and, and then you had the greatest year so far this year. Yeah, so. I did. So that's the gift. Every problem is, is, is this gift that shows you what to, you know, how it works, if it, if it works or it doesn't work. And it, it was so funny because my sister, my mom was, she's so impatient. I know where I get it from. And she was like, are they ever going to get here for dinner? And this is Christmas day. And, you know, I said, mom, we have the appetizers. And Kimberly and one of her team, I invited them over to come as well. So she went and picked them up from the airport because, you know, I like to bring in the strays and all the stuff. And I'm like, Mom, we don't have any control. So I text my sister. Celeste is really getting annoyed. I mean, when are y'all going to come? And she goes, I know that it's so important to you to know and be on a schedule. And I came back to her. I said, well, that was the old me. I said, I have no control. Why don't you just text me when you're in the car? Because I knew they were about 30 minutes yeah. away. And I was so calm. And I think they noticed that, too, that I was like, space. And it's not the final frontier, y'all. It's just the beginning. Just saying. A different era. I when like I, it. When I am space, I am more me. Even though I didn't know what that was, it's not in my nature to be cranky pants or to, to be so controlling and all that. I don't know why or where I plagiarize that from. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, when we're truly being us, y'all, we are pure joy. We are that exuberance. You know, like when you're born and nobody's told you differently, right? And everything make you laugh, you know? That. So, oh my gosh, all the berries are gone. <laughs> like squirrel. This tree outside my window, y'all, full of berries. And then yesterday it was like 40 birds up in it. And now they're gone. Eating the berries. <laughs> And all the berries are gone. All the birds are. I don't know where the birds are. I love my birds. Birds, bees, butterflies. All the winged things. Yeah. So Nature Conservatory is going to give me a plaque. Because I finally did all all the um, landscaping to help the winged things. Oh, yeah. And the native give landscaping. a plaque for your house. you got to come. you got to come. The whole backyard's been landscaped oh, and hardscaped. I love I will come up Beautiful. soon. And then it's going to be spring soon, which is great. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Come play with me. Let's let's make a class or something. That would be wonderful. And at the wonderful I would dress love shop. That. I love the wonderful dress shop. Yeah, and they're willing to have us there on the one day they're closed if we want to so create good. something. Okay, really so cool more there. to come on that, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> I will have you as a repeat offender on the podcast right. so we could talk about that creation when we've got it in place. Love it. And you know, I could talk to you forever. And for those of you that are still listening, thank you so much. And you know, for those of you that aren't on YouTube. You're missing these beautiful hot bitches right here. Um, but let me just, it is called the Cheese and Happiness Podcast. So I know my, my listeners and the smart viewers are just dying to know, although you've probably told us a million things already, what do you do to get your happy on? What's your go-to? Mm. Right now, it almost always involves silence and something with my body. So sometimes it's yoga. Um, sometimes it's literally like cuddling up with my dog and like turning off my phone and just like enjoying all of my senses. Like what am I seeing and smelling and hearing and feeling just for a little bit? Um, travel always. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, we both hate that. It's that. And then enjoying, um, enjoying the moments. You know, I mentioned earlier, my daughters are 11 and 14. And... I think before they sort of hit this preteen teen years, I was like, oh God, please like make it easy, you know? But when I'm in it, I'm like, you know what's fun? Is all of that crazy. I'm so lucky to be a mom of two phenomenal, like young women going through that process we're talking about. Like, who am I? What's going on? Like, people are judging me. Do I need to be worried about that? Do I need to fit in? I'm supposed to be normal. And I'm just like, this is the boy, like this girl doesn't like me now. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember all this. And it's a totally different ball game now. But like that strangely is one way to choose happiness is to kind of get in, like no matter what it is, to get in there fully and go, I'm gonna enjoy this for every morsel and flavor and thing it's offering because our daily life is the playground for consciousness. Like it doesn't have to be like it's, we have everything here. It's like, are we not, well, everything right. we talked about, like, are you going to choose to not get triggered? Are you going to choose happiness? Like, what do you value? What do you want to bring in? What parts and pieces of you did you maybe leave behind that you can bring back? It's like, that for me, that was a long answer. <laughs> but it's all of that. It's all of that. It's a whole other podcast, okay, y'all. Yeah. Okay. It was a summary. It was a summary. You know, what we've been No, I love about. it. I love it. Well, okay, so what advice would you give to those that are saying, Oh yeah, that sounds super, super easy for you because you're so exuberant naturally. You know, I wasn't born that way. What would you say to those people, that, the naysayers? I would about how they could say, choose. "I hear you, I get it," and I would start with literally sixty seconds of something in a day. There's something about and just if you're used to um, be sitting around and like you don't want to get off the couch, get off the couch for a minute. If you are used to going all the time sit on the couch for a minute. If you're used to not yeah. speaking up, try speaking up and saying something when you normally wouldn't. If you're used to like always talking, like what if you like just sat and listened? Like something for 60 seconds, play with shifting your roles with just choosing something different than you normally would. It doesn't have to be opposite. Those were kind of like opposite examples, just something different. Right, right. And then even if it's like, cause I know how busy we are, but I literally will sometimes schedule in like five minutes on my calendar to, as a reminder to like, Hey, go sit for a moment and be with like my sweet dog or just sit and like close my eyes and take a few breaths and just notice if it does fill you up. You don't have to go from instant. Everyone's happy is different. Everyone's joy is different. You yeah. might be like, whoa, you're a little bit too much, but what's, what's yours? What's your flavor of it? So like 60 seconds of 
having any time with you, I think starts to give you more clarity of what choosing that happiness for you is. It's going to be very different for each person. That's brilliant. You're so brilliant. Thank you, my brilliant friend. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Has been amazing, an amazing conversation. You will definitely be a repeat offender. Yes, I'm going to make you come back. Thank you, and I'll have you on my podcast. Mine's like newbie; it just came out last month, but it's exciting. I've only listened. I've only listened to okay two and a half episodes. That's because I didn't get through the last one. Yeah. Thank you. If you guys want to find me, and I love it. Her very first podcast is her just talking, which I do sometimes yeah. too. Because you were like, "This is what to expect," and you were so articulate and everything. I'm like, "Damn." Huh. Listen to her. She know. Do you wonder sometimes it's like, did I actually say that? I'll catch like videos of me from the past that'll like pop up in my feed. I'm like, dang, did I channel that? <laughs> that was brilliant. Oh, that's funny. Well, thank you. I know I'm a weirdo. Thank you so much. And you guys, if you enjoyed this conversation, you know, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, I, I'm that weirdo that reads every comment. If there's something you want me to have on the podcast. Let me know. Hey, if you know of someone that this could have been beneficial for, please forward it to them. And we're going to make sure to have all the deets so you can find Emily and all the things that she has to offer all of her contributions in the show notes so you can find her with ease. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you you again, everybody. Till next time, y'all. Ciao, ciao for now. Thank you so much for choosing happiness. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, share, and give us a like. And if you want more happy, subscribe to the Choosing Happiness membership, where you can play directly with me, Rudrani Davy, the happiness lady. How does it get any better than that?